London was linked with the industrial Midlands by water when the Grand Junction Canal was opened to Paddington in 1801. It terminated at Paddington in West London because this was at one end of the New Road, a broad ring road round London from Paddington to Islington. Here cargoes were unloaded to continue their journey to the city by horse and cart. Within a year of the opening of Paddington Basin, there was a proposal to dig a new canal alongside the new road to the city, and then to extend it to the Thames at Limehouse, where docks were planned. Work started in 1812, and the canal was completed on the 1st of August, 1820. Boats using the Regent's Canal had to pay a toll. The cargo carried by a barge was measured at the toll house, and a suitable fee charged. Made a hill tunnel in 272 yards long. The Regent's Canal extends eight and a half miles from Paddington to Limehouse. It was designed by John Nash, who was at the time laying out Regent's Park and planning luxurious villas in it. Incidentally, some new villas are now being built to Nash's original design. Nash had intended to build a canal through the middle of his path, but as he feared that the sight of rough working men on boats might offend prospective customers, the canal was diverted to the northern perimeter, where it's hidden in a deep cutting. Early one morning in 1874, some barges loaded with gunpowder were passing under Macclesfield Bridge when one of them exploded and demolished the bridge. The columns cast at Colebrookdale were used again when the bridge was rebuilt, but they were turned round. Roofs had been worn in the iron by the ropes whilst the horses were towing barges, and those worn before the explosion are now at the back. And those worn since then can be seen on the side nearest the canal. Nearby at the time of the explosion was a sapling which survived the blast, and the tree today still bears the scars. London Zoo was laid out by Decimus Burton in 1827, and now lies on both sides of the canal. The Pirate Club was started by Lord St David's in 1966 to provide water activities for the children of Camden. The castle on the right was opened in 1977. When the Central Electricity Generating Board needed a pumping station on the train path on the left, it was designed to match the castle. The pirates keep well clear of the zoo bus and other canal traffic on this busy section. From Camden Town to Limehouse, the level drops 86 feet so 12 locks are provided to lower the canal in steps. A lock is a chamber with gates at each end. There are paddles which allow water to be run into the lock from the higher level or out of the lock into the lower part of the canal. When a boat is in the lock, the top gates are closed. Chalk Farm Road used to be called Hampstead Road, so the first lock is still known as Hampstead Road Lock. The paddles cover holes in the lower gates when they are raised, the water in the lock chamber rushes out and the boat is lowered about eight feet. building on the right below the lock used to be Camden Brewery, but in 1983 it was converted to the TVAM breakfast television studios and symbolic boiled eggs were placed along the roof. The canteen is sited overlooking the water. In the summertime, interviews were sometimes conducted beside the canal. The second lock chamber, taught at all the locks except the top one, had been converted to weirs, so that even when lock keepers are off duty, the canal bay may be used without the risk of flooding. When horses were towing barges along the canal, walls on corners had to be protected from the ropes. This roller evidently got jammed while horses were still working, and grooves were cut into it by the ropes. Iron guards were provided to protect bridges, and many of these have had deep grooves cut in them over the years. In 
In 1865, a warehouse was built on the canal to store 100,000 barrels of ale. More alongside it during the 1970s was a barge belonging to a youth club. And when the mayor of Camden visited the club in September 1977, he had the misfortune to fall into the canal. Sadly, the warehouse burnt down in the following year and the barge sank so the youth club had to find new quarters. The site is now occupied by a Royal Mail headquarters. The old Midland Railway into St Pancras Station crosses the canal, and the Midland Coal Basin is now used by the St Pancras Cruising Club. Most of the narrow boats are recently built pleasure craft, but boats of a wide variety of shapes and sizes can still be seen on the canals. The Imperial Gas Works, at one time London's largest, opened in 1822. Four of these cast iron gas holders are now listed buildings. Beyond them can be seen the impressive single span of St Pancras Station, and on the left, the double span of King's Cross Station. Moving into the London Borough of Islington, we see Battlebridge Basin on the right, one of the major basins on the canal, once flanked by timber wharfs and sawmills, flour mills and a paper works. Here is Carlo Gatti's ice house, where he stored ice for the catering trade. Originally, ice was collected from the canal in winter, but later he imported blocks of ice from Norway, delivered here by barge from the docks. The building is now the London Canal Museum. The Islington Tunnel is over half a mile long. It has no towing path, so the horses walked up the slope on the left and the boatman had to leg the boat through the tunnel. Then in 1826, a steam tug was introduced to pull the boats through, a slow and smelly operation, which continued until motor boats were introduced. City Road was the principal basin on the Regent's Canal, serving coal, iron and timber wharves, a brass foundry and a pharmaceutical factory. City Road Locks was one of the three places between Paddington and Limehouse where boatmen changed their horses and stables were provided. This large building in Hackney used to be the Gainsborough Film Studio, where the Will Hay and Jack Hulbert comedies were made. Here also, Margaret Lockwood made all of her films. In the early days, a young man who was employed as a sign writer to prepare captions for silent films stepped in when a director became ill one day and made his first film here. His name, Alfred Hitchcock. A sewer crosses the canal and a painter was asked to paint it the colours of the rainbow. Unfortunately, he placed the colours in blocks instead of as a rainbow arching over the canal. The London Wildlife Trust has identified a large variety of plants growing undisturbed along the Regent's Canal, including some tropical species. At the entrance to Kingsland Basin, a rare tropical grass has been identified. Seeds may have been brought in on cargo unloaded at Limehouse and could then have been blown off as the barges were being hauled along the canal. Kingsland Road is the A10 to Cambridge. The Burnham Road School is using for its water activities an old basin originally used for unloading coal for gas works. The school was associated with these mosaics on the bridge and along the towing path. Some of them seem to be pictures of their classmates. This is indeed a long boat. Several gas works were built by the canal so that their coal supplies could be delivered by barge. The railway is the Liverpool Street to Cambridge line, and between the railway and Mayor Street bridges was an entrance to another basin now filled in. Barges had to be pulled in by boatmen while the horses waited on the towing path, and this could account for the damaged brickwork. 
fifth London borough through which the Regent's Canal passes is Tower Hamlet. Victoria Park is London's oldest municipal park. Its 217 acres were laid out in 1842 on what was once called Bishop Bonner's Fields. Bishop Bonner was appointed Bishop of London by King Henry VIII. Bonner Hall Bridge was once the formal entrance to the park. Old Ford Lock is the eighth from Camden. And the boatman would have another horse change here. Below the lock is the junction with the Hartford Union Canal, built by Sir George Duckett in 1830 to provide a shortcut between the Regent's Canal and the River Lee navigation. This was once a busy section of the canal with Sutton's Timber Wharf, where barges could be loaded and unloaded in the dry. All along the canal, local authorities and private owners have improved their properties, turning to the water as an amenity. At Mile End Lock, near the A11 to Essex, the University of London has recently built student hostels for Queen Mary and Westfield College, siting them alongside the canal. A little further down, there are some attractive houses with their front doors opening onto a waterside walk. Originally, every pair of locks on the Regent's Canal had a paddle between them so that the water from one lock could run into the other in an attempt to save water. The paddle gear is still present at Johnson's Lock, but it no longer works. Next to the lock was once a sweet factory. At the end was a lime juice factory. Perhaps that's why Dr. Bernardo opened the school between them in 1877. The Ragged School Trust has now established a museum here with a cafe beside the canal. The last lock on the Regent's Canal is at Commercial Road, where the canal enters the dock, now known as Limehouse Basin. Commercial Road locks lie under the 1838 viaduct, built to carry the London and Blackwall Railway down to the docks. It now carries the Docklands Light Railway. The basin used to be surrounded by cranes and warehouses, and was full of ships unloading their cargoes into barges lying alongside. Overlooking it is the Hawksmoor Church of St. Anne Limehouse, built in 1712. Now the whole area is the site of a massive development scheme. In May 1989, the ship lock was replaced by a smaller lock, through which boats enter the Thames Tideway. Regent's Canal, opened in 1820, is now no longer used for the purpose for which it was built. In place of the barges laden with freight, we see passenger craft on short cruises and on all-day trips down the whole canal. Commercial traffic has given way to pleasure craft, much of it privately owned. On the towing path, along which horses once plodded, residents and visitors can now enjoy the fresh air and engage in open-air activities, some more energetic than others. There's an abundance of wildlife to be seen along this rural strip of parkland. Coots and swans build their nests to rear their young, and even visiting heron seem less timid, often standing still, instead of flying off when the boats pass by. Where warehouses and factories once stood, the local authorities have planted trees, shrubs and grass, where people can relax beside the water.